right, here we go. Rock and roll. Take one. Pros and cons of living in Kentucky. What's going on everybody? My name is Val Hardesty. I am a local realtor here in the central Kentucky area. My husband and I, Jarrett, work as a team known as the Hardesty team. And we service areas all the way from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, all the way down I-65, down to Bowling Green, Kentucky. We love both areas. We lived in the E-Town, Hardin County, Meade County area for 20 years. My husband is from Meade County and I am originally from Ohio. But we've lived in this area for a long time and we are very familiar with the whole central Kentucky area, including areas of Louisville, uh, but we don't typically service that area. If you are looking for a Louisville agent, we certainly can refer you to some great agents that we know. So don't hesitate to reach out because I'm telling you, YouTube is not how we get paid. We get paid when you call us to use us in your real estate transaction. And yes, that even includes when we refer you to another agent, Full disclosure, when that happens, the agent who referred you does get a small commission out of that. So if our videos have been helpful in any way and you're moving to those areas, feel free to reach out. We'd be glad to refer you out and in the way to say thank you for maybe providing some of this content. Because let me tell you, YouTube is not easy. It is a ton of work. And that is why you don't see a lot of like agents doing this. You don't see a lot of, you know, um, businesses yet on this platform, but it's coming. And more and more people are picking up on where marketing is going in today's world. And YouTube is a huge part of that. Of course, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are useful in those ways too, but video, Video is where it's going, and we understand how helpful this information can be. Believe me, because we've been there, done that, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But when you're researching this stuff, YouTube is a search engine, and Google picks that up, and we know that, and it's so helpful to you guys. It was helpful to us in our move, and we do this as a way to provide you know, value to the people who want to work with us in their real estate transaction. People who are coming here wanting to purchase a home, whether you're relocating or you're a local, um, this is a way for us to show you that we know the area and that we're here to help you. Jarrett and I aren't the kind of realtors that are real interested in stats and ego and suits and stilettos. Nothing wrong with those things. That's just not who we are. So if you're looking for like a down-to-earth kind of family who's just here to help you get you from A to B, we're your people. But back to the YouTube thing, Jarrett and I ourselves had made a cross-country move uh, last year. And it's a very long story. And believe me, even now looking back, I still don't know all the reasons why we went on that journey. Um, we're still learning and we're still like sorting out why God took us on that journey. Um, it had a lot to do with Jarrett's position as an appraiser and the job he took. Um, but there were a lot of personal reasons too. And I know that a lot of people out there are searching for maybe a new town to live in. You want to start over, something fresh, get out of the stale town you're living in. Maybe you're not, you know, real connected with your family members and you're just seeking a, a more interesting quality of life. And we understand that because we were too. So I can really relate to those of you who are searching YouTube looking for what does this town look like? What does it have to offer? Will I fit in there? And this information is so super helpful. So I'm gonna tell you right off the bat because you're probably wondering, because I was wondering this too when I moved from Kentucky to Idaho. Are people here welcoming? And before I moved to Idaho, my answer after living here for 20 years was, yes, people are friendly, but you're never really going to be apart. And I think that's because I, I myself was not from Kentucky and I always felt like an outsider when I lived in the Hardin County, Elizabethtown area. So people are friendly and they're accepting, but it's a really small town. 30,000 people really isn't that big of a town. And in the Elizabethtown area, if you're not a local and you're not from there, or you're not military and you're not part of the military family, it's easy to feel like you're lost somewhere in between. And I can even say after living there for 20 years, I still felt that way. Now, of course, I made 
great friends and acquaintances and business colleagues and I had friends and you know Jarrett's family but I never had my family there and so for me I kind of always felt like I just wasn't one of them and I, I can't explain it um, again people were friendly and welcoming and you have to connect yourself and I did those things I mean with organizations you're interested in churches or whatever and groups and schools and you know, getting your kids involved. And over time, that connection becomes a little more real. So after 20 years time, sure, I definitely felt like I know a lot of people in this area. <laughs> and that's a good feeling. But feeling like you're truly like one of them and connected, I can honestly say that I'm not sure I've ever felt that in the Elizabethtown area. But I'm, I'm getting to more of that. So Hang with me. I'm gonna take a tea break. Hey, one thing about living in Kentucky is locals like to make some really good stuff around here, and this is one of them. This is the best tea around, guys. It is called Fruit Tea Chicks. It's a local, uh, local family that makes it around here. Actually, I think they live in Tennessee. And so here in Southern Kentucky in the Bowling Green area, they sell it in all kinds of different stores and local shops around here. It's the best tea I've ever had. It's like a fruity pineapple mango, got a little cranberry and apple in there too. There's so many flavors. Anyway, if you guys get to come down here, look up fruit tea chicks on Instagram and look at the, um, the vendors and the place that, places they sell and pick you up a gallon or a couple of these little bottles, you won't be disappointed. So back to feeling connected. I wanted to start this video this way because I feel like it's very important. And because connection and feeling like you belong are so important to, you know, um, your quality of life, the human psyche, I mean, belonging is so very important. And I don't know how to put all that into words, I'm not your psychologist, but it's very important to humans feeling like we're of value to something or someone. And so what I wanted to say in that was that I have learned that when we went from Kentucky to Idaho, <laughs> I learned that Idahoans weren't exactly that way. Now that's not to knock people out west or in Idaho, but there is some truth to be told about what's currently taking place and the shifting of people moving all over the country and um, the political climate and tension with people leaving from the far western states, Washington, Oregon, and California, and leaving those environments they no longer want to be in and coming east, word in some way, whether that's Idaho, Utah, or Kentucky and Tennessee. Nashville is exploding with people coming from those areas. And there are people coming to Kentucky as well. We get calls all the time. So that being said, and ourselves having moved to Idaho and experiencing how that culture of people responds to uh, the movement that's happening, there is a there is a night and day difference between what's taking place in these southern, southeastern states and what's happening out there. I experienced it myself, and I'm here to tell you that I, I, I just don't think that Idahoans were that welcoming at all. And it's quite evident, they're very verbal about it, they're very direct, and, which I appreciate because I'm, a, I'm from Ohio, and Ohioans are direct. <laughs> Idahoans really reminded me of Ohioans. Um, they really did. Uh, just very honest, direct type people where sometimes in the South you get that, um, oh, I don't know, sometimes the passive like saving face type personalities where they're just being kind just to be kind and buttering you up and sugaring over things where Ohioans don't do that and Idahoans don't do that. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a cultural difference and mannerisms and behaviors. It's okay. I think there are good people in all of these areas, but there was quite a difference in the way Idahoans treated newcomers. We weren't there long enough to grow that kind of connection and find our community of people. But what we noticed was a lot of conversation from uh, was taking place by us being from Kentucky we felt like 
we got a little bit of a free pass. Because <laughs> um, if you told them that you were from California, things didn't go over in the same manner. <laughs> and it was so evident that even driving down the road, you would see like cars with bumper stickers, like with the state of California, with a big like no sign, or it would literally say like, go back to where you came from, literally like you're not welcome. And it wasn't just one, it was like many. And you know when you're moving to a new state and a new area, you're getting on Facebook, you're trying to join groups, finding people that you can relate with and connect with and learn about the area, right? Well, in these groups out in Idaho, they're very verbal about, go back to where you came from. We don't want you here. And I, I think, you know, don't come here and change our state. Don't change our politics. Don't change anything about Idaho. You know, if you're coming here, don't bring the crap you left behind. <laughs> and um, I think over time, even from Kentucky, that felt very like, okay, I, don't, I just don't know that we're ever going to be like completely accepted here. And again, we only gave it 10 months, which is a whole another story I'm not even going to get into because that's our personal journey that we went through. And I, there's just no time in this video for that. We weren't there long enough to, again, find our people and prove that wrong. I hope that that gets better over there. But what I'm telling you is here in the South and here in Kentucky, and especially in the Bowling Green and Southern Kentucky areas, that is not the case. <laughs> people here are so welcoming and, and there is no verbalizing like go back to where you came from. That's just not a thing here because everybody is from everywhere here. So you're going to run into people from Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Chicago, California, Arizona, you name the state, New Jersey, you name the country, India, wherever there are. This is a multicultural area where I personally can say that I feel like I finally feel like I fit in. That's kind of strange considering I just came from an hour north because again, small town, bigger town, 75,000 people down in the Bowling Green area and it's just way more diverse people from all over, all over the United States and many, many other countries live here. So I feel like it's fine. Like, yeah, I'm from Ohio. I'm, I fit in just fine. I can be myself. I can be who I am and be welcomed by anyone in this community. I, that's the only way I know how to explain it, but I'm just sharing that with you because I lived it and I experienced it for myself coming from Ohio to Kentucky to a very, you know, what I consider to be a small town. I lived in Columbus all my life, so I'm from a bigger city, the suburbs of a bigger city. But coming from Ohio to Kentucky, it definitely took me a good five years to feel like, okay, can I even live here? Um, but I really wanted, you know, um, I don't know. I was searching for a different lifestyle, so. I was open-minded to it and it grew on me and of course I found my people and over time I just can still say that even in that area I still felt lost in between the locals and the military because I wasn't either and then having gone to Idaho feeling like I'm not welcome here at all if I'm not Idahoan and then coming back to a larger city in Kentucky a little closer to a major city which is Nashville and a very uh, full and diverse area of Southern Kentucky where I feel like all kinds of walks of life are here and you're not going to hear go back to where you came from. I mean, that's pretty offensive <laughs> and um, you're just not going to hear that here. You're welcome. You're welcome here and you're welcome that maybe my story helped you decide if any of these places are for you. Another thing you'll learn about Kentuckians is Kentucky women like to wear big earrings. <laughs> and I don't know why that is, but it's a thing in the South. Big earrings are a thing, so it's just what it is. I don't normally wear big earrings like this, but I loved these. And matter of fact, I got these in Idaho. I don't know what it is, but you'll, you'll see Southern women, like even at a football game, and we're in jeans and a t-shirt, but we got giant big earrings on. I don't know what it is. So that was my very long number one pro of living here in the central and southern Kentucky areas is
people are welcoming. And I'm sorry that was like half of the time of this video probably. This is longer form content on YouTube and if you want short form in 17 seconds, you're gonna have to go over to TikTok for that. All right, pro number two. You guys know this one. Here in Kentucky, we get to enjoy all four seasons. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. Sometimes all in one day. <laughs> the weather here can be crazy and if you want a fuller, um, explanation of what the weather is like here, you can visit two of our other videos. One is pros and cons of living in Elizabethtown, where it's basically pros and cons of living in Kentucky. This is just a, a little bit of a more in-depth updated version of that video. It does rain here a lot. We do not get snow. It will snow on occasion. It's mostly flurries. It's sometimes sleet and ice. It's a mix of everything. Yes, we call off school for flurries. I'm not gonna go there because I'm from Ohio and that didn't happen in the 80s <laughs> and it sure doesn't happen in Idaho. Kids are walking across the ice to get to school. I personally don't care for it when we call off school for flurries, but I get it. I guess there's just, we're just not used to it down here. We don't have the, the trucks and the equipment to uh, get the ice off the roads, but I never really understood it because that's not taking place out west. Like you're driving in the ice, this is the way it is, deal with it. So be prepared to, you know, figure out your work schedule because between, you know, December and the end of February, even possibly the first week of March, there might be a sleet day or a snow day or a flurry day when you have to have your kids home all day. So you're probably wondering how bad's the humidity. Well, it is humid here in the summer, especially in August, but it's not near as bad as like, you know, Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama. It's pretty humid there all the time, especially Florida. Like that's just a whole nother ball game of humidity. It's not really that way here. It can be in August, but other than that, um, the humidity comes and goes. We do have some drier days as well, but it's not as bad as the deep south. Mosquitoes are bad all over and that's just a part of life and I'm sorry about it. If you're prone to mosquitoes, you will get bit. Find a house with a screened in porch, that might help. Um, other than that, there are no products that really keep them away. You are gonna see snakes here. I'm sorry about it in the summer. Black little garden snakes. Um, there are some poisonous ones around, but you don't really see that much. Uh, you can find brown recluse spiders, black widows, they, they're not very, very common, but you will run across one sometimes, so you gotta be careful. Uh, those things are dangerous, and I mean, I literally swept one off my back patio one year when my kids were toddlers playing outside. And that was, you know, eye-opening. Um, but they're around, and we don't have things like alligators, of course, but uh, cicadas in the summer can be a problem, you know, like every other year. Other than that, it, it's really not an issue. It, it's just part of living in a little bit of a mild, more mild climate. Oh, lizards, lizards in the summertime, they're everywhere. Oh, I did wanna mention about the weather. Um, some of you wanna know what the average snowfall and rainfall is. Rainfall around here is about 50 inches, somewhere between like 37 and 50 inches a year. That's a lot of rain, where um, your snowfall is only about three inches a year. <laughs> Maybe less when you're down further in Southern Kentucky. Now, if you are up toward Louisville, it's a little higher, um, but we don't get a whole lot of snow here. Just rain, so bring your poncho. Another big pro to living in Kentucky is you are in college sports country. You are going to have to pick a team, whether that's UK, U of L, WKU, something like that. Football and basketball are very popular here all over the South. Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, even Ohio State fans live here, just saying, and you're going to seriously enjoy all the opportunities you're going to have to go to the college basketball and football games. It's so much fun. Also, as you know, Kentucky is known for bourbon, so there's tons of bourbon trails. We've talked about this in previous videos. It is a fun thing to do if you like to get out and socialize, you know, a little bit in those ways with your friends or family, um, not your kids, of course, but <laughs> going on the bourbon trails, in Bardstown and all up through these areas is a fun thing to do. And and it's just kind of what makes the, the spirit of the South kind of um, have a culture and feel of its own. And you're gonna see shops and um, stores that carry all kinds of these, you know, bourbon products, whether it's chocolate balls or bourbon cake or derby pie or whatever it is. Um, 
all over the South. So it's just a fun, a very fun part of our culture, and it's something you're going to experience here a lot, especially around Derby time in May when um, horse racing kind of takes the stage, and uh, it's something we all pretty much participate in. I mean, not everyone is going to like it, but you either go to some of the local races or some of the night races, or you watch them on TV, or maybe you host a derby party at home, and uh, that's just part of the culture here. Now, I will say not a lot of locals go to the actual Kentucky Derby on the first Saturday in May. That is for celebrities who can afford to do so. And that's the flat out truth. You can go on Thurby, the Thursday before, and Friday, which is the Kentucky Oaks. It's a lot cheaper, and that is when a lot of the locals tend to go, you know, during the Kentucky Derby. Outside of that, we typically go to just, you know, Churchill Downs or um, Keeneland and Lexington for like night races or um, charity events or events with your, your business that you're involved in. Uh, your company might have an event there, and it's a big part of what goes on around here. Another very important and wonderful pro about living in Kentucky is the beautiful scenery. It's, it's an actual thing. What you see in some of the photos with the horse farms and the fencing and the gorgeous trees and greenery and the fall foliage in the fall, it, it's a real thing here. Now, it's not everywhere and it's not all year. From um, November when the leaves fall down to April, um, it's not very pretty around here like everywhere else. It's just you know, winterish and gray and muddy and kind of a mess. But the rest of the year, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think all the rain we get is why, a big reason why it's called the Bluegrass State, because everything comes back so lush and so deep green that it, it's just gorgeous, especially in June. I think June is the prettiest month here. But you're going to see that stuff if you get outside of town, of course. If you live in the concrete jungle, you're not going to see those things. But if you head over to Lexington and over in those areas, in between the cities, Owensboro, Elizabethtown, Bowling Green, and Lexington, those drives through there are absolutely gorgeous. Another pro is here in Kentucky, we have a lot of state parks and lakes that are just gorgeous and fun to enjoy. So there's a lot of boaters around here, people who own jet skis, people who love to fish. And in the central Kentucky area, um, some of those lakes are Nolan, um, Rough River, and Barren River near Bowling Green. So those are three of the most popular ones in my opinion. Maybe closer to Louisville, um, people like to go to Taylorsville Lake. We fished there before. And also Dale Hollow is a popular area to go. But tons of outdoor recreation and beautiful state parks to visit. Mammoth Cave being another one that is pretty popular and most of you have heard about before. If you've traveled through Kentucky, that's typically a place that um, tourists like to stop and visit. If you're into caves, Mammoth Cave is kind of a cool place to go visit. Obviously, a big pro to living in this central Kentucky area is location. We've said this before in some of our other pros and cons videos. Um, we are centrally located to many uh, tourist towns, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. You can get to Knoxville. If you live in Bowling Green, Nashville's only an hour. If you live in the Elizabethtown area, Louisville's only an hour. That makes Cincinnati two hours. Um, Missouri, a lot of people like to go to Branson or St. Louis. That's not far. Um, Chicago, of course. And even, of course, down in the uh, Florida Panhandle, a lot of locals here in Kentucky and Tennessee, we all head down there during fall and spring break, and we're very familiar with places like Destin and Orange Beach and even Savannah, Georgia, Tybee Island. Uh, those are uh, pretty popular vacation destinations for Kentuckians. And those are all within driving distance, so you don't have to get a plane ticket. Even if you want to go to Disney World in Florida, Orlando's like maybe a 12-hour drive, maybe it's 14, something like that. Um, but you can get there without having to purchase seven tickets for your, for your kids on an airline. Another interesting pro when you're comparing like some cities way out west and cities here in the southeast region is that down here in southern Kentucky, you, you've, you're in an area where you kind of always have somewhere to go. And what I mean by that is down I-65, down I-95, like there's always the next town to go to. Um, whether you're just hopping on I-65 and 
10 minutes up the road, you can hop off to the next town. There's gas stations or maybe a smaller, you know, southern little town, but there's somewhere to stop and somewhere to use the bathroom or get McDonald's or whatever. Even going down to Nashville, I mean, there's Franklin, Kentucky, or, you know, White House, Tennessee, and there's there's bigger towns that you can stop and visit and see what's there or hit a local, you know, deli or whatever or a Bucky's on the way down. Have you ever been to Bucky's? It's the real deal. It's the state fair of gas stations. But in comparison to what is out west and how widespread it is, we learned living out in Idaho that your next biggest option is Salt Lake City, Utah, which is three hours away. But that's a three hour drive. And it just seems that when you're out there in the wide open, you know, big sky Montana, there's just no no option to hop off on the highway 10 minutes away and be in the next town. I mean, three hours to the next place here is Cincinnati or south would be southern Tennessee. You could almost be in Alabama at that point. Another pro about living in Kentucky is you have choices on if you want like city life or suburban life or rural life. You you can be within all of those areas in minutes if you want to. Whether you lived in the Elizabethtown area or Bowling Green, you can live just 10, 15 minutes out of town and feel like you have a country you know, setting where it's quiet and peaceful and you're on an acre or more. Or you, know, you can live in, the, in this um, tighter suburban communities where you, know, you might have like a quarter size acre lot or maybe even half acre, but you're in a subdivision. Um, or you can live in town, in the cities, and feel like, you know, you want to ride your bike to work or walk to work. That is doable in the Bowling Green area. In Elizabethtown, I'm not so sure. Uh, it depends on how close. <laughs> um, but typically, you're going to want to own a car in either area. I'm just saying that those options to live in the downtown areas are available if, if you like that um, little more of like an urban uh, city life feel. But typically around here people uh, usually ask for space and land and that's what they that's what they want when they come to these areas. We want a horse farm or we want to start a farm or we want you know three to five acres and and those are all very popular properties to, to pursue. Uh, they're just they're hard to come by sometimes it depends but they do pop up and there there is availability um, and, and it can be an option is what I'm saying. Now, if you're looking for, you know, 50 acres or more, of course, that's going to take a little bit longer to find. But typically that one to five acres is what people ask for. And it is doable. You just have to be willing to kind of step outside of town a little bit. And I think the last pro for today is going to be jobs, jobs, jobs. This area is growing like crazy. We have all kinds of new companies coming into this area between Elizabethtown and Bowling Green. A Ford battery plant is coming. There's another battery plant going in Bowling Green. Lots of opportunity here. Tons of growth. And yes, while even we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown in the market and a little bit of a correction as far as like housing prices go, um, they're still moving. It's not completely stale. It's not stagnant. It's not sitting still. It is moving because people are still coming here. We can definitely thank Fort Knox and our military for that in the Elizabethtown area. They're constantly coming and going, but also companies coming in. It is causing this area to just grow and grow. We're expecting a very busy spring and summer season in the real estate market here. So let's talk about a few cons. I don't have a whole lot of cons to list today. Um, the reason for that is I, I think this is a great place to live, <laughs> but I wanna be real and honest with you that there are some things that you may not like about this area. One of course being we've already talked about it, the rain and the muddiness and the humidity and the bugs. And if that's not your thing, you may not like it here because between November and April, it is kind of dreary. Now I can say that this year, 2022, we have had one of the most beautiful falls that I can recall in a, in a long time. Um, it's been very sunny, the leaves have stayed on the trees longer, and it's been pretty mild here in the 50s and 60s. Um, we're just past Thanksgiving at this point. It was 60 degrees yesterday, but we have had falls in, and on into the winter and spring where it feels like it rains every other day, if not 
you know, you get sun maybe once a week. I'm, we, we do have seasons like that, and it, it's depressing, and locals will tell you that. It's the truth. Um, but every now and then, you get a pleasant surprise, and we have the most beautiful sunny days that come right around and make everything all worth the wait. The other con we've already talked about was fitting in, feeling like you're going to be accepted. So here you are going to be welcome and accepted. The con to that being, if you're brand new and you don't have family, this is a con for moving anywhere across the country, I think, because I lived it and experienced it. It's going to take time. It's going to take time to meet your people, to find your groups, to connect in organizations and things you're interested in, and find the people who you're going to build lasting relationships with. I'm just saying that it's, it's not easy, no matter where you go. And I lived it, and I understand it, and hang in there. And if you need a friend to have coffee with, you're welcome to call us, because we get it. Now, I'm going to mention this as a con, but I don't know if it is. It could be a pro or a con. I'm not going to get into this in too detailed of a manner, but the political climate in Kentucky is always changing. It's not a state that is always red or always blue. It fluctuates. It goes back and forth. And so that's just for you to know that some years um, we vote Republican and some years we vote Democrat. And so... You know, you can decide for yourself if you want to choose a state that's one way all the time or you're okay with the fluctuation. Another con I think would be that here in Kentucky we have a lot of flood zones. You can watch Jarrett's flood zone video. I'll try to put the link in the description if I remember, uh, but it's called How to See If Your Property is in a Flood Zone. And there's not, I mean, the whole state isn't a flood zone, but they do exist and you do want to uh, make sure that you're choosing a home and you're aware of what you're buying and where it's located and if you want to pay flood insurance and those kind of things. But it's a thing here and it's just something to look into. Uh, and when you're closer to town, it's not really an issue, but you just want to make sure that you're aware and you know if you're in one or not. I guess you could say that another con to this area would be that we don't really have like mountainous scenery. There is some beautiful rolling hill scenery here, um, but because of it's so dense with trees and forests, you don't really get that out west big sky feel. <laughs> I actually miss that about Idaho and the mountains and just, oh, that scenery was to die for. But here, you don't really get that and, and we don't get the snow to provide uh, for the outdoor activities that maybe people want to experience like skiing and uh, snowmobiling you're going to have to go to a different state for that and another con would be the allergy seasons oh they're terrible and the pollen is terrible here but i think a lot of states have that issue i don't know um it can be for all different types of reasons but allergy season here when the winds blow just right uh just stock your cabinet full of the medications that work for you <laughs> and I'm sorry and it just is what it is. Now I'm going to end the video with this because I know that there's people out there who want to know because you comment and you ask. You're going to want to know about what crime statistics are like. Sex offenders. We cannot as agents legally give you our opinion on what we think are the good and bad areas and what it it doesn't matter. Um, the answer to that is that you as a, as a buyer and a newcomer are responsible for doing your own research on crime statistics and if you're purchasing a house that's next door to a sex offender. Um, we can't provide that information for you, therefore I won't, but um, I know you want to know those things and we have had some comments and people ask. They want to ask about things like you know, racism, and, and we're just not going to fall into that trap. <laughs> we can't answer those questions for you, and I'm sorry. So that is up to you guys to do that research. Um, we've lived here our whole lives, and we love it. We think it's a very family-friendly area. People here are very kind and welcoming and accepting, and I think you're going to do just fine. Those things are everywhere. And it's sad that's that's the way today's world is. Um, but I'm sorry, we cannot point out the specific areas of town that we think they're worse. 
it would be just a matter of opinion. Uh, but statistics will uh, be out there for you to research and you can do your own research. And on that note, I wanted to say that we cannot also comment on what school districts we think are good and bad. It's the same type of situation. Uh, you guys as buyers are responsible for doing your own research. Uh, go to greatschools.org. You can look up rating if that's what's important to you as far as what a good school is. Everybody has a different opinion on what a good school is. Sometimes it can mean what's their football program like. <laughs> and other times it's academics and do they offer a... Um, an associate's program at graduation, those kind of things. I don't know how to answer those questions as far as where are the good schools. In my opinion, they're all about the same. <laughs> and in saying that, that's coming from someone who's lived in Ohio, lived in Kentucky, and lived in Idaho, comparing public schools. I've had my kids in all kinds of schools. I've had them in private school. I've ha We've done homeschool before, and we've had them in public. And I just think in the United States as a whole, the public school systems are about the same. So I'm, I'm very sorry we can't answer the question on what we think is a good or a better school. Um, it really is up to you guys to decide that and do that research on your own. As a mom, I would put my kid in any school in this area. So there's that. Believe me, we have five kids between the ages of 25 and 13. This is not our first rodeo. And I'm here to tell you that your kids are going to pick the same group of friends no matter how hard you try <laughs> to sway them in a different direction. Your kids are who they are. They're going to make their own decisions. They're going to figure it out for themselves. And if that's something you're concerned about, taking your kid out of this school to put them in this school, hoping that they'll choose better friends, I'm here to tell you they're going to pick the same kind of people because... It's who they are, and it's what they know. Enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, and Godspeed. That was a ton of information to cover. I hope it was helpful. If you guys are looking to move here, you can reach out to Jarrett and I. Our information is in the link below. We'd be glad to help you. And that's the whole reason for these videos. We, we hope, uh, we know that you find them helpful because you tell us, and we're so grateful for that. Thank you to the people who contact us. Um, weekly at this point, yeah, we get calls and emails and inquiries, and we are not too busy for you. Uh, Jarrett and I, our goal in real estate is not to be the big name top producer. Now, yes, we wanna grow our business and do well, but we're here to help you. Um, we enjoy doing this. We enjoy helping people and get you from A to B. We love telling you about our town. If you are agent lists, <laughs> feel free to reach out because again, YouTube doesn't pay us a dime. We do this for you to show you around our community and we would be thrilled if you like our personalities and think that we'll be good to work with. Uh, we would be so grateful if you would want to work with us in your real estate transaction. So thank you for watching. This video has been very long, I'm sure. And we will see you again, hopefully next week. Um, it is the holiday season, so forgive us if we skip a few Sundays, but we will be back very soon. Take care, guys.